do we always attract people and situations and things that trigger aspects that we are ready to integrate? If we resist, we might feel that we are not ready to integrate it and we might push it away and push it away and push it away. And um, it doesn't mean that we get away with it just because we think we are not ready. That's why, you know, shitty things happen that we might judge as shitty, such as getting a cancer, because we pushed away the emotion it's for so, so long. long. <laughs> and we had every chance to integrate it and we didn't because maybe we didn't feel ready, but we still don't escape it just because we don't feel ready. It's gonna, you know, come biting us in the ass because, and it's not a punishment. Really, it's not a punishment. It is that we, our higher selves, want to integrate. This is what we wanted for this life. We said, I want to integrate that thing. And if our earthly self keeps avoiding it our whole lives, it's actually on a higher level, it's in our own best interest that something dramatic happens that forces us to integrate that thing. Yeah, we have, by the way, two videos about, or three videos about integration and parts work. Basically, like those stuck part, parts in the trauma held us back from being our true authentic self. And when we go there and integrate those parts and update them like, hey, yo, I'm here for you and give a presence and love to those parts. This is how we can integrate those mm. parts and coming more to our center self, or our mm. integrated self where it's free from the programming and free from the matrix mm. and this is a tool that we all have access to the first step towards dissolving your internal matrix is to start coming into presence with what is inside of you to withdraw your attention away from projections to withdraw your attention away from what's happening out there back towards our internal world because then we're not entangled we're not reacting we can we need to we need to become aware of our internal truth and to be able to hold space and be present with our internal experience and that includes uncomfortable emotions and uncomfortable experiences that's the very first thing to do is to learn to be with uncomfortable experiences and to be fully present in your own reality in your own experience internally and trust also that it won't end up bad because <laughs> the reason we we don't go there is because we have like a big fear about like oh if i surrender to this fear or to this pain i'm gonna stay with it forever it's not the case men asks why are so sad guys you mean us <laughs> i do have sadness in me actually and i did oh. um, have some sadness this morning and you know it's such a spiral, like even if we process a lot of emotions, the more we integrate, the more emotions are going to come up because sadness is like, especially grief, it's like that coming back to yourself and acknowledging what happened to you, acknowledging the hurt that you've been through. Mm -hmm. So the more you integrate, the more you yeah. will feel. You will feel, you'll just, it's not like you stop yeah. feeling, you become better at feeling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there is nothing wrong with sadness. Like we, we don't want to like send this image that you are always happy and light and yeah. all this like bypassing um, that many actually spiritual teacher and spiritual awakening beam, mm -hmm. but out this image that you are always happy, it's not the case. And mm -hmm. if we are true to ourselves, like what's happening to the world, like I personally feel a lot of sadness of, everything happening around us, all the suppression, all the uh, misleading information that we are faced with, all the people who are getting like sick for not having access to real information. Of course, I would feel sadness for that. And mm -hmm. I think that's part of our human experience to be real and to feel the sadness and to feel the love and to feel mm -hmm. the grief and to, yeah. So yeah, you might pick up on sadness, but also important for you, I think Mina brought the question, to look also within you, if you feel the sadness in others, do you also feel sad? Mm -hmm. Do you also feel grief? Do you also feel maybe hurt of what's happening in the world? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, what's happening to the animals, what's happening to other brothers and sisters around this world. So, yeah. Yeah, so quite, quite often when we see things in others, it can actually be a projection of, yes, it may, may be in them, but it may also be what, we are projecting out because we don't want to feel it within ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because for example, right now I feel also peace. I feel also love mm -hmm. and I feel sad. So yeah. 
it's it's a process to hold to hold emotion for to hold space for all this emotion within us because it's not just like oh i'm happy now there's like so many inner children so if you became aware of them you'll see how much rainbows you have mm. inside you gentle earth saying greeting as well yeah mm. yeah thank you for being willing to feel yeah exactly because that's the way we're gonna dissolve this this mess really uh, the external mess that we've created is that we begin to feel we're willing to feel and then act from a place of integrity with what we feel and then like when we face when integrate the sadness there's like a lot of openness a lot of joy like real joy coming mm -hmm. up it's not like oh i i don't want to feel sad i push it away suppress it and then i feel like ah, oh, i'm joyful that's a mm -hmm. fake joy and you can mm -hmm. like if you are empathic you can feel people when they are like uh, representing this fake feelings outside there so yeah integration love all your emotions uh, thank you so much for watching us and hopping in and uh, you can still write your comments even after this mm -hmm. and we will uh, read them all and try to answer as well yeah love you guys thank you for joining today. yeah so much love to you